Okay. And uh, I let him speak. Thank you for the introduction and good afternoon. Can you see my presentation? Uh, fine. Yes. Um, my they talk about uh, quantum thermal transport in the short sum regime of the such EPT type model. This work was done together with um, Mikhail Kisilov. Uh, but uh, yes, I want to encourage everyone to ask questions if you feel that it's appropriate time in the middle of the talk. It's totally okay, and I think we'll have enough time. Uh, first of well. Even condensed matter theorists, not to mention the higher com the community, would uh, ask a question what is such a PK type model and what is short sum regime in this model, and then only start, uh, make sense to talk, sense to talk about quantum thermal or thermal transport. So I quickly introduce uh, such a PK type model and try to do it as accessible as possible and but still again feel free to ask any questions this model uh, started uh, well actually appeared initially in uh, nuclear physics in 1970s uh, but it was reappeared in uh, condensed matter community in 1993 with paper of such year. Uh, but became really famous uh, in 2015 uh, after a talk of Kitai, uh, where he introduced it in the modern form, but for mayor of fermions, uh, and showed uh, why this model is actually very interesting. Uh, he wrote it in the modern for form for charged fermions, and for now I forget about chemical potential and talk in general about the purpose of this model. It's, uh, we have n fermions uh, with random all to all interactions, and uh, the interaction constants are random, but they have certain symmetries, but what's important, uh, in average, this interaction is zero, uh, but uh, the variance of the interaction is now zero, so the interaction is Gaussian. Uh, this is um, this model is interesting because it can be so it has exact solution uh, in large n limit. Uh, we simply introduce uh, Green's functions and by uh, mean fin anal analysis looking into uh, the settle point for the effective action or by analyzing the contributing uh, uh, Feynman diagrams, we can uh, find the system of wigner dyson equations in large n limit. Uh, basically, this, uh, this system allows uh, several solutions when energy is, uh, is quite large then we can neglect uh, the second term and we get uh, free fermion solutions. Uh, can you hear me? Everything's okay? Yes, yes, no worry. Okay, that's okay. But uh, there is an opposing limit when we neglect uh, the first term of this in this equation and then we have a uh, non-trivial solution uh, for our model. This regime is called conformal regime, which I explained the reason a bit later, but it was also shown uh, some time ago that uh, the system has one, once, uh, one more regime, which is called the Schwarzen regime, which lies even lower in energies. And these two regimes are a really interesting part about this model and it generated a lot of interest in uh, various communities. Uh, so why this model is uh, so interesting? Uh, the inter first of all, it's uh, highly uh, strongly interacting non thermal liquid system, which has exact solution, which is already quite cool. But as Kitaev showed in his talk, 
uh, this model actually uh, is a simple uh, uh, well has a simple holographic has simple holographic duality uh, to a black hole in ADS anti-DC two-dimensional space and that's why the community explored it because I think before it uh, the easiest the uh, holography, at least best known holography model was uh, supersymmetric Young Mills, which is extremely intimidating. I would need the whole page to write its Lagrangian. While in contrast here, you have uh, this nice look in Hamiltonian and you reproduce uh, uh, basically a lot of uh, properties which you expect from black holes. So you have a toy model to study uh, holography and even quantum gravity, as we see later. But also, it was uh, discovered uh, soon afterwards that this model is extremely important for quantum case studies, as well as for understanding physics of strange metals. Uh, and so even those different intercrossing between these regions were known before, or at least they were suspected. Uh, it turned out that this VK model actually sits in the in the middle of everything. So this model has something to offer to um, to many well not everyone every but many communities in condensed matter and high energy physics. Let's start with conformal regime. As I mentioned, we just uh, neglect one term in the equation for the Lin function. And then everything can be uh, solved uh, exactly. It's easy to see that uh, this is solution by simply plugging them here, or by doing after doing the Fourier transform, uh, this equation also will be satisfied. So, uh, what's why this uh, is important? Uh, that uh, the same Green's function. Uh, well, the system is holographic dual to the black hole, and what it means, basically, fermionic matter uh, in the vicinity of the black hole horizon has the same uh, uh, green screen uh, propagators. Uh, moreover, uh, it's possible to show that uh, thermodynamic properties of this model are coincide with thermodynamic properties of the black holes. Uh, the most known example is that zero, zero temperature entropy for this model is uh, the Bekenstein Hawking, Hawking entropy of the ADS black hole. Uh, then going to quantum chaos, uh, there is such thing as a Lipanov exponent, which uh, shows you how fast to close trajectories diverge in time. And uh, unlike in like uh, classical physics, it was shown for any quantum, any body th uh, systems in thermal state that uh, this uh, exponent cannot be, uh, cannot exceed uh, the bound of uh, KBT over H. Uh, and for all, uh, well, for almost all systems, this uh, exponent is lower than this bound, with the exception of two known systems. One of them is uh, black holes, and the other is this like a model. Plus, uh, there is a lot of activity in this now uh, concerning uh, higher dimensional generalization of the SLK model. Uh, there are SLK chains, uh, lattices, where you have uh, SFK dots sitting in the, in, on them, or some other non-trivial high-dimensional uh, generalizations. Uh, and it's, for now, it's the best toy model for strange metals that we probably have. Uh, it reproduces a lot of benchmarks of these uh, things. And when I say strange metal, it's uh, well, that's a term used to characterize some cuprates, nictides, and other compounds. Uh, what's common in them is that they have uh, valiant resistivity, very peculiar compared to normal metals, uh, thermal diffusivity, and other things. And some of these strange metals are high temperature superconductors. Uh, so another, well, we can capture all of these properties with uh, 
some SYK generalizations. And another interesting question is whether you can make uh, these models uh, superconductive, since uh, the superconductivity in this uh, studies are uh, non BCS types. But unfortunately, for now, it's it seems that there are, it doesn't give you high temperature superconductivity. Uh, the temperature is, in fact, uh, reduced compared to BCS, but who knows that this door is not completely closed. Let's go back to the conformal regime and uh, its equations. Uh, we can, uh, for now, we can see that, uh, well, if we look closer to this uh, equations, we can see that there is not one solution, which I showed you before, but actually you can do, you can reparameterize uh, uh, your time with any monotonic differentiable function, and you'll also have uh, another possible solution. So actually, uh, there is kind of a manifold of solutions, which uh, has this general form. Uh, and what's common for them? Uh, they all, uh, well, this saddle point uh, remains invariant under such transformations, and it belongs to the group of uh, conformal transformations. Therefore, this regime is called conformal regime. Uh, and this is true both for Majorana fermions and for complex or otherwise, in other words, charged fermions. Uh, but of course, if you have charge in the system, then obviously U1 symmetry is also preserved here. And one of uh, implications of the conformal symmetry you can do this reparameterization and you instantly get a uh, finite temperature solution for this like a model without doing any additional calculations just well it's well so, and so, sorry yes? andre if i can uh, interrupt you so when you say when you talk about charge uh, syk do you mean when you look at the syk model for fermions or bosons and well, the Mayolana or uh, uh, the, basically, there are usually two types of almost identical types of SYK series. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are about Majorana fermions and others about uh, complex fermions, and it means just fermions is electric charge. Uh, but, but it does yes. not appear, I mean, it doesn't seem to appear in the model the fact that they are charged. Well, you can have here these fermions and you have a chemical potential. Mm -hmm. So basically this model gives you just uh, charged fermions. Okay, but so there is here the U1 global symmetry. I mean, you can add some, well, like I want to show it here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe we can go to this uh, slide. Uh, you can uh, do the transformation on, on your permit operator, and so the solution remains invariant. This one corresponds to the conformal transformation, and this one comes from the U1 symmetry transformation, yes? So the model is always U1 symmetry? Uh, so far, yes, if we talk about charge fermions. If, yeah. But if there is charge to talk about, but uh, as I told you before, we to get this regime, we made uh, one important assumptions. We uh, neglected this term in the effective action, uh, while in principle this term is of course present and it breaks both of these symmetries. So before you could have any fluctuations without additional energies, and now each fluctuation uh, will come with some finite cost. Okay, so just just to understand well, so what you're saying is that if you're looking at any SYK model, it is actually so. When you're looking at just the Hamiltonian, it is actually U1 invariant, global invariant. However, uh, this is actually only the case, only if you neglect this extra um, yes, exactly. time-dependent uh, part of the kinetic term in the action, yeah. because yeah. this kinetic part uh, term and this, of the action this term corresponds to this break the symmetry. Yes. Okay. 
I see. Thank you. So you have Goldstone modes in your system now, uh, which, uh, well, you have two different types of Goldstone modes, one for five field and then for F field. Uh, and you can write effective Hamiltonian, for, oh, sorry, effective action, uh, accounting for this fluctuation, quantum fluctuations. Uh, fortunately for us, these two terms uh, factorize. There will be some higher terms, but they are separated as one over n, and n is extremely large number, so they neglect it. Uh, this constants k and m are just of the order n over j, and therefore we come to the energy scale j over n, where this uh, uh, symmetry breaking becomes important. And uh, this entity is the Schwarz so called Schwarzian operator defined here. But, well, actually, both these terms are nothing new. We all know them from other problems. Uh, like uh, for those who are familiar with uh, the Coulomb blockade uh, uh, problem, you can see that it's exactly the same term as appear there, and one over k is plays the role of the effective charge and energy. So for charge Fermi is like k, and this regime, uh, you naturally have the appearance of the Coulomb blockade. And the second term is also well known. It's actually well known in uh, high energy physics, uh, where in a nutshell, uh, it accounts for fluctuations of quantum fluctuations of metric uh, near the ADS black holes. Uh, and so it's, well, and this addition, in my opinion, is just additional reason to be amazed by this model, since we not only capture classical gravity, but some quantum uh, quantum corrections to classical gravity. Uh, and for instance, this whole discovery started a lot of uh, investigation of uh, uh, wormholes uh, by means of the coupled SVK dots uh, uh, in this regime. Uh, so when we stay in the Schwarzschild regime, we need to account uh, uh, for all the appearance fluctuations and uh, average our green function to see how it's normalized by the fluctuations. Uh, it's easy to show that uh, the answer factorizes. So there is one term which comes from average over uh, five fluctuations and one over after we integrate over F field. Uh, in principle, there will be some other uh, kinds of other type of fluctuations which are also allowed, of course. It's like you always have some goldstone modes and some mass modes, uh, some usually sometimes referred as Higgs modes. But they have a uh, very small comparison to this one, to the Goldstone modes in this case. So they usually neglect it as uh, they have smallness of y uh, 1 over n. Uh, the first uh, multiplier here is the Coulomb correlator, which is very well studied in the last, I guess, 25 years in the problem of the Coulomb blockade. Uh, for zero temperature from zero temperature, it looks like this. And uh, at final temperature, it will be something more complicated, but the idea is the same. At uh, large uh, T, you have exponential suppression of the correlations, and uh, it goes to one when this uh, function argument is very small. While Schwarzschild correlator, uh, reproduces uh, the conformal regime at small times or what's the same sufficiently large energies and while so when we stay here. But below these energies, uh, the Green's function is factory normalized in this way. And well, actually, there is even one more regime uh, which appears at even lower exponential small energies, or you can say that at very, very large times. 
and nobody until now knows how to deal with it. It's also known that the SOC emergency regime should clear some gap. And there are very good arguments why this regime should capture uh, genuine uh, quantum gravity regime of the black hole. So we start from here and go to uh, classical black holes. Then we account for um, quantum uh, operations near the classical solution. And then we come to basically string model or something like this. And well, now people trying to study this regime of the Saki model numerically, uh, or there is another way to approach it. So like people from string community uh, try to analyze how the properties of black holes uh, in this regime and apply it for the SYP systems. Uh, so this was an introduction to the model. Uh, I provide here useful links, uh, which you can check if you're interested, if, uh, if you find that this model is actually interesting and worth looking further, such if and yeah and Kitai, that's where all this uh, story started. And fun fact, Kitaev never published uh, uh, this uh, results as paper. It was presented only during a talk in Kavli and exists as a video recording from this talk. So I think it's uh, safe to assume that it's the most cited video in condensed matter and high energy communities now. Then such developed uh, the ideas further and uh, show dualities for charge uh, ch uh, complex complex SYK models to charge the black holes. This is a general nice paper to look into the basics. Uh, this story about quantum chaos, uh, some small selection of uh, papers about strange metals, uh, SYK and superconductivity. Uh, I think two most important papers for the Schwarzschild story. And there are quite a few experimental proposals now for this model, even though unfortunately, None of them are realized at the moment. Uh, well, maybe one of the problems that most of them are concerned in Majorana fermions, and we don't have them to begin with. But this one uh, deals with uh, irregular shaped graphene flake in magnetic fields. So I think it's quite reasonable, and uh, most of uh, further results uh, actually. Uh, can be related to this experiment for char for charge SYT model. I think it's a good time to make a short stop and ask if there are some questions in general. You can ask for more details or some additional explanations before I go to the second part of the thermal transfer. Okay, then I move further. I introduce the system. We have uh, SLK quantum dot realized by charged fermions. It has some linear size, therefore, it has finite charging energy. It has uh, spectral asymmetry, which uh, related to the chemical potential of the model. Uh, there are two leads uh, with applied voltage bars, and the leads uh, has the leads have temperature gradient. Uh, the leads, uh, well, the coupling of leads to the dots uh, executed by means of random of uh, tunnel of random tunneling, and uh, okay. Going to more strict formulation of the problem, we have this Hamiltonian or the SYK dot. Uh, we have a term corresponding to charging energy of the dot. You can think about it as uh, diagonal matrix elements of four fermion interactions, uh, density density type, and non diagonal terms. 
Then there are three pheromones inside the leads and the coupling between the pheromones inside the dot and uh, of the, inside the leads. Uh, since we have, uh, well, by means how we, how we realize uh, the model, uh, it's very easy to assume that since uh, uh, coupling constants for the SVAC interaction accounts are random, uh, the tunneling also will be random. And it also is Gaussian, so average of lambda is zero, while uh, variance is finite. And due to this uh, zero average, there will be no direct tunneling in the system, but there will be indirect tunneling processes, namely elastic tunneling and inelastic tunneling. And uh, we also assume that uh, we stay in the weak tunneling limit because if uh, the tunneling uh, factorized by a large number of uh, coupling, uh, then uh, the whole um, uh, settle point for the SVK model will be shifted and it will be very painful to fix uh, this uh, shift. Uh, so, well, it can be done numerically, but uh, uh, the, the analytical beauty of the model will be uh, spoiled a bit. The charge in energy, as we discussed further, always is present for this SY, charge SYK system, but we have also explicitly have term with charge in energy. So the total charge in energy is given by the sum of these two contributions. Sorry, one precision, uh, yeah. Andre. When you take the average over the lambda i, is it the average over the realization or only the average over the size? Uh, you can, uh, well, lambda i can be anything with any sign and any, any absolute value. But when you take uh, all, when you take sum of uh, lambda and average it, then you get, you get zero. Basically, it means that lambda so is also Gaussian, is Gaussian random value. So, sorry, so do you mean that when you, the average, you sum over the i and then divide by the number of sides, or do you average over the realization? Mm, I'd say it's rather realization. Over the realization, okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I have a question. Like, uh, I mean, if I understand the model correctly, like uh, the, the couplings in the SYK model are also random? Yes. Uh, this uh, coupling, well, inside the SYK, we have random interactions J. Yes. Okay. And they, so, they are Gaussian. Yes, they are Gaussian. And we also have Gaussian couplings lambda i. And, uh, OK. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. So let's look into theory of thermodynamic transport. Basically, we have a uh, gradient of voltage and temperature. There will be electric current and heat current in this system. They are given by this simple formula. Uh, and uh, these uh, currents depend on uh, transport coefficients, which is electric conductance thermoelectric coefficient and uh, thermal conductance, uh, which is connected to this large scale. And of course, there is a thermal power, uh, which is just a relation, a ratio between these two coefficients. Uh, the currents uh, easy to get simply using the fermi golden rule. What we have here, Density of states inside the lead, density of states in the dot, and uh, difference of uh, Fermi, uh, Fermi Dirac uh, distribution functions uh, for in, in the lead and in the dot. Uh, combining these two formulas, uh, we can explicitly get all the transport coefficients. And they are expressed here uh, in terms of the T matrix, which defines all the transport properties of the system. So, in principle, what we need to do just to find the T matrix and then compute these integrals. Uh, T matrix uh, have 
have it has uh, two principal different um, principal different kind of contributions. One comes from elastic tunnelings, and the other from inelastic tunnelings. There is of course some high order corrections, but since uh, when the weak tunneling limit, they can be neglected. So usually this term defines all the transport, but as we see later, in some cases it's uh, completely suppressed, and then uh, the elastic term defines how it must be properties in the system. Uh, the correlation functions here, uh, correspondingly two point and four point SVT correlators, they all factorize in the same speed as I showed above into column uh, part and SVK part. And the same happens for the four point part. When we have four point column correlator, which uh, takes every uh, quantum mechanical average over phase fluctuations and uh, uh, four point function for the SVK experiments. So here we have electric conductance, uh, which is the sum of uh, elastic and inelastic processes. All of them are shown here. Uh, have well, if uh, the temperature is uh, high, much higher than the energy of the um, of, of the charging, well, than the effect, effective charging energy, uh, then. Uh, the conductance behaves as one over uh, square root of t, while uh, actually at uh, lower temperatures, uh, we would one would expect that uh, conductance should be exponentially suppressed by the exponent of the Coulomb correlator. But here, uh, the inelastic proton process come to rescue. And uh, the conductance actually retain its uh, behavior. It's uh, linear, well, it's here uh, in the conformal regime, while uh, it uh, gives this uh, 3 over 2 power in the Schwarzschild regime. And now we can consider thermal, uh, thermal power also known as the big coefficient. Uh, it's, uh, for large enough temperatures, uh, thermal power of the SVK module is constant, and it's uh, 4 pi over 3 uh, times uh, spectral symmetry parameter. Uh, basically, how far your system from particle hole symmetry point. Because uh, thermal power as well as uh, thermal thermoelectric coefficient uh, directly proportional to this parameter, uh, so give zero if you stay in the particle hole symmetric point. Uh, but for accounting, uh, well, when you go to lower temperatures below the Coulomb, effective Coulomb uh, blockade energy, uh, of course, uh, all direct tunneling processes are exponentially suppressed. And uh, you need to, one would need to consider inelastic tunneling processes, but uh, they also, uh, it turns out that they also financially suppressed. So both of the process have this uh, exponential suppression, and it turns out that elastic uh, process still dominate a bit over the inelastic ones. Uh, so we have this. Uh, uh, Explain, exponent with some prefactors uh, in both regimes uh, below uh, the energy of the Coulomb plaquette. It's also very straightforward to get Peltier coefficient since we know thermal power now. Uh, what's uh, the implication of the result? Uh, basically, um, we have a selective Coulomb blockade where some uh, the transport coefficients uh, are suppressed and remain final, while the other ones, namely non diagonal ones, are uh, extremely suppressed. Uh, the, it's not an hard uh, case, but extremely unusual. I think that's the first uh, example of the thermoelectric blockade when GT is suppressed while. Uh, G and kappa remains actually uh, retains power, power law structure. 
Uh, and well, even though there are some reports of uh, the so-called heat coulomb blockade where uh, electric conductance uh, retain, remains unchanged while thermal conductance is a bit surprising. But here is the principal novelty in the thermal power reduction. Uh, thermal conductance uh, in this situation can be approximated as uh, Tj, uh, simply because uh, it well it normal has another term proportional to square root of thermal power, which is extremely small uh, in this case. Uh, so it always uh, plays the same way as uh, electric conductance up to additional power, and again we have elastic process at higher temperatures and dominating in elastic processes which give you a power dependence at lower temperatures. We have some uh, what's we now uh, can discuss some applications uh, of this results, for example, there is a so-called Kelvin formula, which puts connection between thermal power and entropy. Basically, it says that uh, thermal power is uh, entropy per particle. This formula is usually approximate uh, and uh, works uh, in the thermodynamic limit of transport. But what's really interesting in the systems uh, with conformal symmetry, just uh, for instance, as a SYK system, uh, this relation is exact. So an interesting uh, consequence is uh, can we go to, to zero or at least very low temperatures and uh, measure bekenstein hawking entropy directly looking at uh, thermal power? The answer. The answer is no. Uh, because even though this ratio, this relation remains correct at higher temperatures, when we go in the region below uh, EC, EC, so uh, the region of uh, Coulomb blockade, uh, this uh, relation is broken and uh, entropy remains finite. Uh, what's interesting, without Coulomb blockade, this, re this relation would be true even in the Schwarzschild regime, where the conformal symmetry is broken. But uh, due to the Coulomb blockade, uh, the thermal power goes to zero, while entropy remains fine. Uh, there is a question. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Uh, from Saptashi, so is there any physical meaning of constant difference at high temperature? Is meaning of what? Is there any physical meaning of constant difference at high temperature? I, I, uh, you mean uh, thermal power or what? Maybe uh, the... You can unmute, unmute I, I, the person. Can I, can, it's one chapter she and I don't know. Yes, uh, I will can give uh, Sapashi the right to talk, so maybe you can you, you can um, talk Hello. directly. And yes, please uh, explicit your, your, your question. Hello. Yes, yeah, hello. Yeah, it is regarding the thermal power at a high temperature. It seems uh, there uh, there is a constant difference. Okay, you are, you are interested in why it remain why it is con why it constant? Yes. Huh. Constant in temperature. I mean, there is a, it goes asymptotically to this constant value. Yes. And both uh, converge to separate values. They don't converge to the same value. And could you repeat values. your second question? Uh, both the uh, uh, plots, they are converging to a different values, but not uh, converging them together to some asymptotic values, like zero or something. Hello. For different, yes. Uh, basically, uh, um, there are several arguments. Uh, 
for Kant's meta theory, we just have well, uh, thermal power is just entropy per particle, and uh, in this in this packet system, it remains kind of the same. Uh, it's a large temperature limit. Uh, basically, you should maybe remember that the system has some formal uh, symmetry. So it, the ratio, the Kelvin formula works here perfectly well. And it captures uh, the fact that uh, the constant thermal power uh, corresponds to constant Bekenstein Hawking entropy of the black hole. Um, I'm not sure whether it answers your question. But yeah, it's it's it can be very very rigorously shown for just SVK charges SVK that uh, thermal power is four pi over three, and it it's connected to the entropy of both uh, the SVK system and of the holographic dual system, and of course it has some correction, uh, which behaves like this. But asymptotically, it approaches finite value. It means that uh, the ratio of uh, these two coefficient uh, will be uh, constant at very large temperature. So there is always some conversion between electric between uh, temp heat and electric current. Let's say. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, Andre, I yes. have like so in the same line. I have this. Just want to confirm that the, what you say is in the previous plot, your result would go to the dotted value as you keep on increasing k. I mean, at this point, it yeah. seems that the, the result is different from, and it kind of looks like really constant. Yeah. Well, it approaches here slowly, uh, but also well, it also th there is also let's say some numerical artifacts uh, in play because we can see the finite values of n and some not not too small values of lambda just to capture Schwarzschild physics uh, in principle when you okay. when you above certain temperatures uh, there is complete uh, all non-elastic contributions are completely spread completely small but here you will have some small interplay still between uh, uh, two contributions uh, simply due to these parameters. Okay, just uh, one more yes. like so, uh, small um, What does it? How how? Do, I mean, what does it mean that as you see that your absolute value is uh, lower, you're more closer to asymptotic value? Uh, does it mean something? Uh, no, I think I can just put it here and check maybe. I mean, I just wanted to see that the red curve is slightly still more far away, but then yeah, it's the, it will reach there. So never mind. Thanks. Yeah, well, it just, uh, well, for us, uh, this is proportional to spectral asymmetry. And the red line, for red line, it should be the, it's twice larger than the blue one. Uh, so the difference, uh, because epsilon also uh, exists in this term as well, and it takes a little bit uh, longer to straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, actually, even with these parameters, you can consider only elastic process, and you get just perfect to perfectly reproduce this analytical law. But when you add, add uh, inelastic process, uh, to account for this regime, it spoils a bit uh, this uh, large temperature synthetics for transformer one. Thanks. Yeah, and another interesting fact is that uh, what change to look what happens to the Wiedemann's uh, Wiedemann Franz law. Uh, this law is satisfied in all metals and some semi-metals. Uh, you have, basically it says that the ratio between uh, heat conductance and electric conductance is proportional to temperature and the constant number, uh, which is known as Lorentz number is pi square over three. 
uh, sometimes, well, in some systems, this law can be broken. And in SYK, if we neglect uh, the coolant blockade effect, uh, the whole structure of the Wiedemann France law remains the same, but the ratio uh, will be slightly different. It's now pi square over five. And if we introduce the coolant blockade effect, then the law will be completely broken, but we still uh, can uh, define uh, the Lorentz ratio as a zero temperature limit of this relation. And it will give you pi square over two exactly in conformal regime and uh, almost pi square over two in the Schwarzschild regime. Yeah. And here are some additional links. That's our paper. Uh, some results, well, of course, this work based on previous results on quantum transport. Uh, that's uh, charge conductivity in the conformal regime. That's charge conductivity in the Schwarzschild regime with uh, accounts for inelastic ports for this for charge conductivity. Uh, the address of elastic process in thermal power or the thermal power, mainly in uh, a conformal regime with some discussion about the Schwarzschild. And additional paper which I want to highlight about uh, the Coulomb correlator and how to evaluate it because it was a long story for more than a decade where, uh, when different groups were getting, were getting different results and uh, this paper kind of settled the whole story about the exponential suppression and the right numbers in the exponent. Uh, as conclusions to my talk, I want to highlight again that we found something principal new. Uh, we call it thermoelectric coolant blockade. Uh, so a more null transport coefficients, only diagonal coefficients uh, survive the low temperature regime in this SYK model, while uh, all non-diagonal goals are completely suppressed as we go to low temperatures. And it happens due to crucial role of inelastic tunneling, which save diagonal coefficients, but cannot do it for uh, non-diagonal coefficients uh, simply because uh, the four point Coulomb correlator uh, for diagonal ones, uh, uh, well, uh, Gives the leading uh, order of the leading contribution from the Coulomb correlator in this case is a constant, which is completely fine. But when you consider JT, uh, this leading order gives you exactly zero simply by symmetry arguments, and you need to go to exponential small corrections. And it turns out that there is no advantage in inelastic processes or elastic ones in this particular case. We also see that the Coulomb blockade uh, breaks down Kelvin formula and they change uh, the Lorentz ratio. And with this, I want to thank you and I'm ready for your questions. Thank you for the talk. Uh, so, are there any questions? I mean, there was a lot of questions already. So. Uh, are there any questions? Um, so, like, if, uh, I have a question. So, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, just to roughly understand, like, uh, at this results, like, you considered the system but coupling to be random, right? Uh, yes, random Gaussian, and you can do this yeah. average of them. So despite, well, the whole idea with SYK, it sounds terrible that you have all to all interactions and all of them random, all of them strong. So what to do, but when you take disorder average, you can get pretty nice uh, Gaussian dependence. So you have, well, due to the fact that uh, the variance of these coefficients is finite and it's constant, 
É isso que eu can do all this analytical results. And the same idea works okay. for transport. When, well, it's not a new idea actually. Uh, there were some papers of, I think, Glassman with co authors about uh, random quantum dots, uh, where they showed that uh, when you have, even when you have uh, zero, um, zero, zero average tunneling, you can get uh, finite tunneling uh, due to this uh, variance, non zero variance. So, so you're saying that I mean this. Uh, I mean, if if we consider this couplings from any other distribution with well, finite variance, the res results are the same. Uh, well, well, first of all, if you consider well, here the uh, coupling is Gaussian, so the average is zero. But you can apply some bars and say that you have some finite. Uh, zero tunneling and uh, uh, distribution of uh, coefficients around this non-zero value, yes. But then it will give you direct tunneling process, which will dominate over all indirect tunnelings. Mm. No, I'm saying that if, if there is no direct tunneling, but, uh, but I take this uh, coupling from uh, uh, other any other distribution other than Gaussian, the result. I mean, the ratios that you said in the Lorentz ratio, they, do they change, or do you have an idea? Like how, how sensitive are those uh, results uh, to how you take the system bus coupling? Yeah, you mean just simply change my coupling constant? No, it's mm -hmm. it, it doesn't change at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This well, you can put various lambdas, uh, it doesn't matter because basically uh, uh, you can say approximately the well, at least um, for the sake of simplicity, let's say that uh, kappa is proportional to lambda square or lambda power of four, and j is proportional to lambda square, and they just cancel each other. Okay. And, and another question, like I, I do not understand, like uh, is when you, when you have you're connecting the system to two bars, to the bar, and then you're always working on the small temperature gradient limit, right? Uh, you mean okay? Uh, I have is my system small. and uh, some temperature difference, yes. You have what? Uh, yeah, I have uh, my quantum dot and I have yeah. it uh, with some temperature difference. So there is a heat current and it also generates and then, electric current. And your question is? And, and yeah, and the DT is, uh, you're, you're always working on the limit where the delta T is small. Uh, well, you know, I am working in uh, linear response theory. Uh, what you do here, you basically, uh, yeah, you, you put okay, this yes, difference yes. to to zero uh, and to look. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah. Okay, 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 thanks. So basically, so there... yeah, J is basically I over delta V in the limit of delta V goes to zero and the same for GT in the limit of delta T goes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all the first order, so it's... Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, but is there any other questions? We have a lot of time. Five minutes more. So, uh, since I have no idea about these systems, I'm just trying to understand that the figure that you show, the small epsilon is related to some asymmetric spectrum, spectral asymmetry. Um, you do not keep your density uh, of uh, uh, so the charge density fixed, right? So your mu is not really uh, because in the very first slide when you introduce the the um, introduce the Hamiltonian, you said we forget about this mu, but that's just because it's a diagonal term, or you keep your density fixed. No, well we forgot it simply. Uh, 
explicitly to describe the whole idea of this vacuum, what, what what's going on there. But in principle, if the system has chemical potential, of course it's present, but it turns out that in conformal solution, uh, you just trivially add it as exponent uh, to your Green's function uh, here. And uh, in the uh, Schwarzschild uh, regime, there will be some corrections, but they all account here. I did this extra slide. Uh, that's your conformal Green's function. Uh, you have you see that uh, there is a theta angle here, uh, which uh, gives which is way to parameterize this uh, spectral asymmetry which I talked about. And what is spectral asymmetry? Uh, well, you have every charge in your dot, which is uh, zero, let's say zero, if you in the particle hole symmetry point, yes. But if you away from this point, uh, it's not zero. And then the, uh, theta has some finite values. And then uh, as a consequence, epsilon also uh, has some finite values. So epsilon in some way, just uh, how we reparameterize uh, our chemical potential. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm. Okay, so are, are there any other questions? So if not, let's uh, 